Hello everyone and welcome to another Steel Division 2 deck deep dive. And this time we look at the division that is one of the top dogs, especially for the exercise, and that is the 7th Panzer Grandier Guts from Berlichen. Though my deck is not quite the absolute meta version of it, as I like to play this thing Vanguard since its release, and basically since Normandy 44 I like to play this in a more aggressive stance. And so this is how this came to be, and we will have a look from one tap to another how I try to win with this. And we start in the recon tap, where you get a lot of 20mm auto cannons. You get them with the 231s, and you get them with your offclavers in the form of 222s as well. And I try to get as many of these as possible, so we get... Four two two twos and four three two three ones in A, so up to eight in A, and another eight in B, and then the two three threes, which got a bit nerfed, but still are an amazing support weapon. You have to be a bit more careful; they are not instantly paying for themselves anymore, but they still can pay for themselves pretty easily, and that's why we take them with one star veterancy, as they also have pretty good veterancy availability, and then they get more accuracy and a solid amount of more rate of fire. And these help out together with the 231 to really allow you to push early on, high speed, and then also nice infantry support, good HE, solid AP against enemy light armor, against enemy 20mm auto cannons. These are amazing against enemy light tanks. They also can work if you position them well and come out at the right moment. So, Recon Tap here, already a really strong one. And then we go into the infantry tap, and here you just continue to being strong. And the reason for that is the SS Legionary being a really amazing CQC unit, thanks to the four Berettas, uh, assisted by the Molotov. These guys do a pretty solid damage output on short range for their 20 points. And the G43 is a solid rifle as well, helping out with damage there. On the longer ranges, you don't really want to fight. Like, you don't never want to fight with this on just 500 meters. G43 is a decent rifle, but still not enough damage output on four of them. If you would have more of them, that might be different, but with only four, you really want to keep this in CQC. But at light forest fights also, this really excels. Like, in the edge of forests, these things absolutely annihilate. And if anything, guns into 100 meter range, you hit them as well. Panzerfaust, nice on top here, too. Um, really good use of four weapon slots. Still hoping for that in Wano, but that's another story. Then let's move on to the Volksdeutsche, which are just discount Panzer Grenadier uh, 34, MG 34. For 25 points, you get Pans basically Panzer Grenadiers. They have Disheartened, but it's this is a long range fi firepower score. Disheartened doesn't really matter because the enemy often doesn't even shoot back that heavily on you when you have these, and with that, you can also bring them with veterancy, which is unique for disheartened units. Usually you can't do that, but here you can do it, and they that means that they also have good accuracy and so on, and get the extra damage output that you often on other disheartened units can't get. So here you get some extra firepower. I take one with two star veterancy. The availability curve isn't amazing, as you can see. Um, you lose one third per tick instead of like the usual 25% that you hope for. Uh, uh, but I still feel like having a two-star veterancy infantry here in A is pretty nice, and you have the cards for it in a Vanguard deck to do so in my eyes. So I go with one of them on two-star veterancy, and then I have a normal Panzerkrieger card. If that would be more Volksdeutsche card, I would take more Volksdeutsche, but you you can't. So one more Panzerkrieger card for a good amount of infantry in A. Then you have another twenty-four infantry in B with one SS Legionary, one Panzerkrieger MG thirty-four. And then you get one more normal Panzer Grenadier in C phase. Maybe I should swap these around. Uh, actually, thinking about it, I think it's better to swap these around and have these in C just as the last follow up so that you have a bit more push power in B phase with another MG42 Panzer Grenadier as they are slightly better than JMG34. What you could also consider maybe is getting a Pioneer in instead of these Panzer Grenadiers for the question, but I feel like I already have the Pioneer Führer. In a for a bit of TNT that it can mix in here, so I don't feel like it's absolutely necessary. Also, these come in traction, so they can take a bit of terrain early on. That's why I take them as well. Traction, absolutely amazing vehicle, and you get more of them in the support tab. 
though not as many as you once got. This division got nerfed already quite a lot, but it's still really strong. And the tank tap is another reason why, because the Stuck 4 is the medium tank buster. It is really, really strong against other medium tanks. Thanks to its extra frontal armor compared to the normal stock. 100 front, uh, millimeter frontal armor makes it pretty much immune to Shermans. Makes it relatively, uh, in, like, really hard to kill for T-34s as well. And even Panzer Force and other Stooks start to bounce from time to time on these. So, especially on the full, full range. And that all for not much more than a normal stock in price is really, really nice. So, I absolutely love these vehicles. They are also hitting up against higher tanks relatively well. They, you can penetrate things like a T-3485 or a Panther with these if you use them correctly at the right range. Uh, so they are pretty versatile in that regard as well. And against everything below them, they just hit amazingly hard. And then in the support tab, you get the... Tractions. Sadly, you don't get them on the flamethrower anymore. You don't get them on your MGs anymore. But you still get them on the Felt Gendarmery. So that is what we bring here for having extra tractions, getting the territory early on, crapping that. Then the IG-33 to hit the enemy hard with long range, giving you a good 2000 meter range HE. Always important to have that in your deck if available. And then we have the Befeld Traction just for because it's a cool commander. Uh, you could do other things here as well, like taking another IG-33 card in B-Face, taking an MG-42 card, all viable options, maybe even taking a Flamer card, but I feel like the traction is just too cool to not take as a leader, and that's why we go with it. And I have enough leader units, I feel like that having a commander can be worthwhile. And then in the anti-tank, you have another amazing tab, even more options than you might be able to use, uh, like the, the choices here. The only issue with this anti-tank tab is that you don't have enough slots, basically. But you have your Pack 38s, you have your Pack 40s, you have your Yark Panzers, and you have the Pack 43 group, which is an amazing heavy tank killer. Here as well, Yark Panzers trade well against everything, uh, every, every, all the medium tanks as well. Also, thanks to the extra tank penetration they do pretty well against T-3485s and against especially the 1943 model and against Panthers as well and they are totally immune to Panzer Force and enemy Stooks so if the enemy is a Stook division as well you bring out the Panzer Force instead of the Stook Force in B-Face and then you win there as well. Um, Martyrs would be nice as well but as I said it's just so hard to fit them in and I feel like for the case that you run into a heavy tank deck you want to have the Pack 43 group uh, in your deck so in ranked, I always would put this in. If you play in a tournament and you know the enemy doesn't have any heavy tanks, I would switch this out for a Mater 3 card. Or maybe another Pack 40, but most likely a Mater 3 card. Panzer Shrek's also obviously can be nice on the right map. Um, this is really the one I would consider changing around if you want to change anything. And then AA tab, you get solid options as well. Um, a bit of a shame is that you only have a fl FLAC 36, not a FLAC 43, as your 37mm AA. FLAC 36 having quite a bit less rate of fire, which is really important, the most important stats on AA. So, um, they are not as deadly, but they still keep the enemy away with one star veterancy, pretty potent. The FLAC 41, always great, um, can be helped out as long-range uh, support gun as well, if necessary, but always good for keeping the enemy at bay. And in the artillery tab, you don't get that off map anymore, which is a shame, but you get a lot of other good options. Though, for an aggressive Vanguard deck, what we want to achieve is a breakthrough, and to achieve that, we want to stun down the enemy or take out enemy position key positions, and for that, I feel like nothing is better than a Nebel Werfer after an off map. Obviously, off map would be perfect, but Nebel Werfer is the next best thing. And we take these with multi ammunition so they can get their supply in automatically with themselves a couple of mortars if we can uh, if we need them always nice as well nice to have the if you play this maverick or balanced you have good uh, artillery options here as well up to an m10 with radio or the sheriff alter pizza 
M30s uh, with radio. M30s without radio on the Soviet side, pretty bad. With radio, they actually are pretty solid artillery guns. But as I said, this is all for non-Vanguard decks. For Vanguard, we just want to hit hard and quick, and that's what naval warfare do for you. And then the air tap does the same thing. We, we want to deal with enemy threats early on. That's why we use the rocket BF 109s. We use the G1 early on. And then in B phase, if there's still something standing, we come in with some GU88 bombers. Your fighter is a solid one. The only issue with the BF 109 G6 U4 is that it is a bit slow. Um, you would like it to be above 600, but its firepower is quite nice as it has a 30 millimeter and two 13 millimeters so it puts out a solid amount of damage and bad resilience ah, is also a bit problematic but it's a solid fire and together with your solid aa tap it can do the job especially if you, as you only have to hold out for the early game as you want to have one by the 25 minute mark so you don't need to have too too many fighters you don't want to fight a prolonged air war if the enemy is air spamming you you just push on the ground with what you have here it's as i said one of the best decks in the game uh, has a lot of versatility as well as as we were able to see like you can use pioneers here you can use different support equipment here you can choose a lot of options in the anti-tank tab artillery tab is really flexible as well here you have the options between two different anti-tank versions though the jod8 cluster is a bit underwhelming in my eyes at the moment um, but yeah you could also go for a bmw with radio if you want to play with more artillery really one of the most flexible ones the only thing that is not flexible is the options in the tank tab but that's because the tank itself is already flexible so yeah it's an absolute top dog and if you are new to the game and you have the dlc where they are included uh, which is the back to war dlc i absolutely recommend starting with this division on the axis side it's teaching you everything you need to know about the axis i would say with you getting reliant on super heavy tanks or so it has the perfect combined arms and that is really what makes this division so lovely and yeah thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this deck deep dive we're gonna jump with this into a ranked obviously in the next one so if you want to see that consider subscribing so you don't miss out on it if you liked the video consider giving it a like so more people see it out there and with that said see you next time bye bye